Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Means of transport wherein we'll talk about diffusion Plant water relations Water potential, osmosis, plasmolysis, imbibition Long distance transport of water Transpiration Uptake and transport of mineral nutrients and flowing transport, flow from source to sink. Now what are we going to talk about in this lesson is transport in plants. What kind of transport are we talking about? So whenever the word transport comes to our mind, what, what do we think of? The first thing that strikes us is moving from one place to another for example we often talk about how shall we transport i mean what is our means of transport from our home to school from our home to our office so we need some means we need a vehicle whether it is a bus or an auto or a car to travel from our home to our school or to any other place maybe a market or office or a mall so you need a means to transport objects from one place to another. Now here in this lesson we are going to talk about the transport system in plants. How things are moved from one point to another inside a plant. Now have you ever thought of why do we water plants? Why do we need to uh, give water to the plants regularly? Because they need water. Now is it only water which they need? or there are something else as well which is needed by plants. Of course, plants need a lot of things. For example, they need a lot of gases and minerals. For example, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus. These are some of the basic necessities of plants. They need all these things for their growth and development. Now, when I talk about carbon, plants take most of the carbon from carbon dioxide. How do they get carbon dioxide? During the course of photosynthesis, what do they do? They take in carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen. Right? So, when they take in this carbon dioxide, they get carbon from this CO2. When you talk about hydrogen and oxygen, they get both hydrogen and oxygen from water and that is why we water the plants, we put water to the plants. When you talk about minerals like nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus, they get all of these from the soil. So inside the soil, you have the soil is rich in all these minerals and plants take in these kind of minerals from the soil. Now the question is, a plant can be a very little plant or it can be a huge tree. Now, how is the minerals which are absorbed from the soil? Now, which part of the plant will absorb these minerals from the soil? Definitely, it will come by a root. Now, how will these minerals be transferred from roots to all other parts of the plant? Because each and every part of the plant is made up of plant cells. And the cells need to undergo all the life processes like cellular respiration for the plant to be alive. So each and every part of the plant needs each of these things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and the minerals. Now how do we ensure that the minerals absorbed by the soil, from the soil by the root is transported from root to all other plants, all other parts of the plants? Similarly, when you talk about carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is basically absorbed or is taken in through the stomata, the small pores which are present in the leaves of the plant. So again, in this case, we need to ensure that the carbon is transported from leaves to all other parts of the plant. Right? Again, when you talk about water, water, whenever we put water to a plant, where do we put that water? We primarily put it into the soil because we feel that the water will get absorbed by the roots and then it will be transported to the rest of the plants. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about all these ways of transport, how water and other minerals get transported throughout the different parts of the plants. So we are going to talk about all those mechanisms. So when you think of a tree like this, when, when we talk about water or other minerals which are present in the soil, so they primarily get absorbed by the roots 
and then they are transported to the rest of the plants. Similarly, when you talk about the food prepared in a plant, now how is food prepared by the plants? Plants are autotrophs, they prepare their own food. They prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis. So in which part of the plant photosynthesis occurs? Exactly, it happens in leaves. So the food which is prepared in the form of glucose is present in the leaves. So those food, those food material also needs to be transported to the other parts of the plants including the roots. So this process of transport of minerals, water and food to different parts of the plant needs a means of transportation. So here we will see how all these different things are transported to different parts of the plant. Now the question is who helps to transport in plants? Like when you talk about human beings, we have a, a specific system. For example, we have the circulatory system. What is the function of circulatory system? To circulate the materials or gases throughout the body. I mean, when you talk about circulatory system, which is the central organ of the circulatory system, it is the heart. So the heart pumps blood and it sends it to different parts of the body. So it basically helps in sending the oxygenated blood, that is the pure blood to different parts of the body. And it also collects or brings in the deoxygenated blood or the impure blood from different parts of the body to itself. So that is how it helps in circulation or movement or transport of material. So what does this blood do? Blood basically it is a fluid. It carries with itself several dissolved nutrients and useful substances to different parts of the body. Similarly, while coming back in the deoxygenated blood, it carries all the impurities and waste products from different parts of the body. So in human beings, we have a circulatory system like this, which helps in transporting stuffs to different parts of the body. So it's similar in case of plants also, we should have something. We do not have a circulatory system as such in plants, but we do have the vascular bundles or the xylem and the phloem, the vascular tissues. So they are the conducting tissues. So they help in conducting water, minerals and food materials to different parts of the plant. So xylem and phloem are together known as vascular bundle or vascular tissue. The word vascular means conducting because they help in conduction. Now how they help in conducting stuffs that we will see a little later. Now when I talk about xylem, it helps to transport primarily water from root to different parts of the plant. As I said, water is mainly absorbed from the soil by the roots. So xylem helps to conduct water from roots to all other parts of the body. When we talk about phloem, phloem mainly helps to transport food material, food. What is the food in plant? Food is nothing but sugar which is prepared by the process of photosynthesis. So flowing helps to transport this food from leaves to different parts of the plant. So primarily these are the two important functions of xylem and phloem. So in this lesson we will see how xylem transports and again how phloem transports. So that is our main agenda here. Now if I'm I am not getting into the detail of what is a xylem and what is a phloem because I am expecting that all of us know that by now because we have spoken about it quite a number of times in quite detail but still if you want a quick recap you can just look at this picture and recall whatever you have studied about xylem and phloem late uh, earlier. So if you cut a cross section of any part of a plant whether it is a stem or it is a root you can actually see ring like structures layers like this. So what are these layers if you see here, this is your secondary xylem, this is your vascular cambium, this is your secondary phloem, this is your core cambium. So basically the inner portion is xylem and the outer portion is phloem. So here also if you can see this is your xylem and this is your phloem. So they are present in a ring like structure, like something like this. You have a layer of xylem like this and then again outside this you have another layer of phloem. So if you want to know in more detail about xylem and phloem, you can refer the pre previous videos. Now there might be a couple of questions in your mind. So now we know that xylem and phloem helps to transport. The question is how xylem transports? How phloem transports? 
how is it possible that water moves up the plant because all of us know when you leave a ball when you throw a ball upwards what happens it comes back or it comes to the ground on its own why because of the gravitational pull the earth tends to attract each and every object towards itself because of gravity so now how is it possible that water which is absorbed from the soil by roots will move up the plant against gravity so there has to be something which will actually be able to push water or pull water upwards against the force of gravity so these are some of the interesting questions which we are going to answer a little later so let us now talk about the different mechanisms of transport in plants there are quite a few mechanisms which occur inside a plant because of which the transport actually takes place so let us see what are the different mechanisms which we are going to talk about in this lesson so we will talk about diffusion so all of you know what is diffusion because i have given a basic intro to diffusion in one of the previous lessons so anyways we'll talk about it in detail one is osmosis plasmolysis imbibition root pressure and transpiration pool so these are some of the mechanisms of transport in plants now if you look at the first four that is in fact when you talk about osmosis plasmolysis or imbibition they are all uh, some special forms of diffusion itself so these four basically help in transport over a short distance that means if the plant is not very tall so there it helps all these mechanisms primarily they help they help over short distance transport for example if the plant is this short so you just need to send the water only up to this much height right but as the plant grows you actually need to transport it over a longer distance so when this plant becomes a huge tree you again need to transport it over a very very long distance so these two mechanisms root pressure and transpiration pull they primarily help in long distance transport however these mechanisms of diffusion plays an important role even in huge plants now as we try, we what we'll do now is we'll try to understand each of these mechanisms in detail one by one once we understand all the mechanisms then we'll sum up our knowledge of all the mechanisms and we will see how the overall transport in plant take place thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again